I just started the recording. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to call to order the October 3rd meeting of the African Heritage Reparation Assembly at 2.01 p.m. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. So uh, we'll start as usual with a sound check here, and I'm going to start with Hala. Hala present. Okay, and Ms. Bridges? I hear you, I'm here. Great, Dr. Rhodes? I'm present. Okay, Dr. Shabazz? <laughs> I see your wave, but let's hear you. Can we hear you? <laughs> yes, I'm here. here. <laughs> okay. And um, Pamela. I'm here. Excellent. All right. Wonderful. So we um, have uh, a few really, I mean, everything on our agenda is important, but there are a couple things that I want to make sure we do not miss this week. Um, one being, I would like to give you an update on the free cash transfer. So I'm going to actually begin the meeting with that. Um, and then I would also love if Hala or Dr. Shabazz would be uh, willing to give a BAM update. I believe there was a meeting. And so um, if one or both would be willing to do that, it would be great. And then we will talk about our engagement campaign and our upcoming listening session. So before uh, we move into any of that, are there any general questions? All right, and Alexis also will be here, but will be a little bit late. So I'm gonna share my screen. Um, I want to show you, Pamela, would you be able to enable um, screen sharing for me? Uh, I should be able, and um, just so that you know, you have two attendees, so I don't know if you wanna do a uh, public comment. Let me see. Yes, we will absolutely have a period of public comment. And in fact, Mary, I'm hoping um, when we get to community engagement, we'll be able to come in and, and join us because she was integral in the boots on the ground effort that started yesterday. So I've, I've asked her to give us an update on that. Okay. Um, Are you able to share now? Let me give it a try now. Yeah, it looks like I am able to do that. Um Okay, can everybody see a screen that says other financial orders? Okay, great. So this is in the packet for this week's tonight's town council meeting. It's a draft um, that was produced by the finance department. And um, the reason I'm showing it to you is because it shows what is being um, recommended in terms of the reparation stabilization fund um, and the certified free cash transfer. And that's for, um, so remember last spring is when they, the town council initially approved moving forward uh, with this. And then we had another round where we then got to the $2 million commitment. So um, this is the actual amount of cannabis tax revenue that's been collected in FY22. It's $134,330. Um, and that is being recommended um, to be transferred into the reparation stabilization fund. This, along with all of the draft financial orders, will be referred to the Finance Committee tonight. Um, and so tomorrow, the Finance Committee will meet and discuss this order and uh, several other orders that are on the table. And so I just, I wanted to just share with you that progress. And of course, after tomorrow's meeting, I am a Finance Committee member, so I'll be there for sure. I'll be able to answer any questions or concerns. And then of course, I will report back to the group. Um, but I wanted to see if there are any questions or comments or observations that 
uh, members would like to share. Okay. Um, well, one observation that I have is <clears throat> that amount is I think lower than in terms of what was collected um, from cannabis tax revenue is lower than maybe we had thought it would be or that it had been previously, I should say. Um, so it was in the $200,000 range previously. And I think there was an expectation that the number was going to be um, lower for FY22 for a variety of factors. Um, I suspect that it will rebound um, and be up, back up to that $200,000 range. But as you recall, our cap is 205000 annually anyway. So um, of course, if it remains at this level, it's going to take us longer to build the fund. And um, if that is the way that it's being modeled, we just want to keep our minds um, aware of that. So any other there questions or comments on that? All right. So um, Dr. Shabazz or Hala, would either of you be willing to give the group a BAM meeting update? Is this an appropriate time to do that? Is, is there um, something that you could share with us about what's happening with BAM and with the meeting? Dr. Shabazz? Uh, I welcome uh, any... Uh, Anyone else's input on this? I was trying to pull up the email that I have um, that gives the specific details of an upcoming um, hearing uh, session or, or uh, opportunity for um, members of the uh, uh, African heritage community to learn about um, and to discuss within a um, within a, an, an all African, all black people environment. Um, and uh, it is, looks like October the 8th at um, 2 p.m. I believe. Um, does anyone else have their hands on that handy? And it will take place here at- um, I do, Dr. Shabazz is from one to 2.30. Thank you. Uh, I have it now. So um, the next uh, BAM meeting of the uh, um, Black Assembly of Amherst, Massachusetts uh, will be hybrid uh, and will take place Saturday, October 8th from 1 to 2.30 p.m. Uh, the in-person gathering will be at New Africa House on the University of Massachusetts campus. That's 181 Infirmary Way uh, and Clark Hill Road. Um, snacks will be provided uh, and I will be sending out a link uh, no later than Friday, October 7th, no later than the day before. So if you are on any of our emails, um, uh, email lists, then you will get it. If you do, are, are not, then please feel free to, uh, to email uh, us at uh, amilkarshabazz at gmail.com, amilkarshabazz at gmail.com and we will see to it that you get the uh, the link or uh, details of where it will be held in person on Saturday, October 8th. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Shabazz. And we have Mara here, um, who is an editor and contributor and founder of the Indie. And so I will follow up with Mara after this to make sure that she has all of that in case they want to I know, I think they usually put an issue up on Saturday morning, but I know they've also been doing in like on Wednesdays. And so, um, and to clarify this um, listening session is only for residents that identify as black and of African heritage. Um, and it is being organized by the black assembly of Amherst mass. Um, and so that's an important distinguishing, you know, um, element from the listening session that the AHRA is going to be hosting on the 27th, which we'll talk about. So, which will be open to all community members, but will center African heritage voices. 
Um, so thank you very much, Dr. Shabazz. I really appreciate that. Uh, Hollow, would you like to add anything about BAM and what's happening with BAM um, at this time? Um, no, thank you. Dr. Shabazz has covered it. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Um, okay. So let me just see what EXA. Um, okay, great. So we uh, yesterday started our boots on the ground campaign, and it was a really, really um, exciting, I think, um, step in our work. And I'm going, I'm going to bring in, um, or Pamela, if you would, would mind bringing in Mary, um, that would be wonderful. And in the meantime, I am going to pull something else up here to share. No, don't pull that up. <laughs> okay. Uh, wonderful. Hi, Mary. Hi, <laughs> Welcome. Hi everyone. <laughs> nice to see you. Nice to see you all. Um, so, yes, I was just about to share. Um, I just want to give people a sense here. Um, so welcome to AHRA's Facebook page, um, which we are going to use primarily uh, the reason that I created it was so that we could create events and be able to share them easily on social media um, from our hub here at AHRA. Um, but what I wanted to show was um, this lovely photograph that we took uh, of the group yesterday. I hope everyone can see that. Um, so this is the group, which consisted of uh, community members, including Mary and Mattia Kramer and others, as well as Amherst College student senators, three of them. Um, so we gathered together and at, at Riverside over in North Amherst, and uh, we had all of our materials, and then we devised a plan. And I'm going to let Mary give an update, um, or I would love for Mary to give an update if she's so willing, just to share uh, what got covered in terms of development, in, ter in terms of the, the areas, and then uh, what, if anything else you'd like to share, Mary, that would be great. Um, yeah, you might you might have to help me, but uh, Michelle oriented us really nicely. We I think most people hadn't seen the lovely inclusion cards in their finished state. So uh, we um, you know we divided them amongst us, and I think we had um, we had one, two, three, four groups, and we fanned out um, me and one other. I think there were one, two, three, four, five of us went to Rolling Greens and uh, in, in near, near Echo Hill and uh, three went to Riverside apartment complex, which is in North Ham Amherst. And then we had, what was the other, one other apartment complex? Village Park, we had Village, Village Park. Park. Yes, so yes. we had one and joined later by three. So we, we fanned out and, um, that people had really good experiences. And we found, you know, lots of, um, lots of people don't open their doors. So we left a lot of cards, but the people that we did meet, um, I, and I can speak for the, the five of us that went to Rolling Greens, uh, we had um, uh, several people of African heritage that were were very interested, including one who was really a highlight who I'll tell you about in a minute. And then several um, white Amherst residents who were really interested in the project. People didn't know much about it and they were interested and they were interested in the listening sessions. Um, and uh, so, you know, we, we were excited, the, the five of us there were felt that it was, uh, it was really, um, exciting for us to be just 
inter to being the, being boots on the ground and interacting with real Amherst residents. And uh, so one person at the very end, um, uh, a black uh, woman who was has was raised in in Amherst, went to schools, uh, elementary, middle, high school, college in Amherst, and um, is now a mom of three, and her kids are uh, middle school and one high school. So as we were just kind of talking and introducing um, uh, the reparations effort, tears just kind of sprang to her face, and it was it was it was really a moving experience. So there were two of us that were at the door with us, and we spent about an hour, um, kind of just listening and hearing just the powerful, articulate sort of combination of her personal experience in, in Amherst, and and as as well as just how she wove it into. Uh, the experiences of her friends. And there was one just really poignant uh, moment where she talked about um, having, um, having had a lot of uh, shame personally, um, that when she went to college and took a few courses and began to get a picture of what systemic racism was about, things started to shift for her and, um, so she talked, you know, so she is that, you know, throughout the conversation, we, um, we uh, said, you, you're really a voice that would be wonderful to have at these listening sessions. And um, she said, you know, I have many friends who have a lot to say and who would really like to be heard, in particular, if it could be as safe as this conversation is right now. <laughs> And uh, she just talked about um, the just the, the 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 desire to be seen as the person that she is, and instead of consistently being seen as a stereotype, in and and her kids, she has a 16 year old, she has two boys, middle school 16 that she's really worried about, and lots of stories about uh, uh, difficulties with the educational system, kids being uh, pushed into IEPs and special ed programs when she didn't think they were working, not an opportunity to have a voice, uh, uh, ha being uh, have children and uh, uh, department of children and family being called on, on her um, challenges with, um, I'm trying to think, um, something else that she, oh, and she talked about the ripple effect of each one of these things and how she felt her housing was threatening as, as her reputation got, um, mm. you know, got uh, mis, misunderstood and, and misrepresented. So at any rate, um, she, she was a highlight. Um, she invited us in, she showed us her, her children's artwork and, and, and uh, so, she will be there. She took 10 cards to, to bring to lots of her friends. And, and really, um, I think in summary, having you just chatted with some of the other people, it was great to be, uh, you know, to have these uh, uh, lovely pieces to, 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 to bring, to offer people to, to be included. And um, I, 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 think that, I think that we will have some response um, and people will be at the listening session. And, and if not, they more broadly understand that, that there is a reparations effort going on. And, you know, and we felt, we felt supported. <laughs> I don't think anyone had, had a, a experience where the door was uh, slammed in our face. And uh, we had uh, many more experiences of interest. So Thank it was great. So and much, the pizza, uh, Michelle, <laughs> heroically had to run. <laughs> I do have to mention that on a public meeting because as a district one counselor, I really wanted to get the pizza from Amherst House of Pizza because that's where we were meeting. Um, but unfortunately they weren't open in time. So I did run down to Antonio's and um, so I'm just mentioning that. <laughs>
<laughs> I might get in trouble for <laughs> Stop talking, Michelle. But the, the student, many the students really appreciate. It. Anyhow, and it that was also really nice for us to connect as the Samaritan residents and and students from the college. This 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 was a lovely connection as well. Well, thank you, Mary. I just before I, I have more to say, but I want to just pause and make sure that Yvonne welcome Yvonne to the meeting and make sure that she can be heard and hear us. Yes, I'm munching. So <laughs> this is lunch, late lunch, but yes, I can hear everything and it's just so um elated by your responses. That's wonderful. That's really great. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah, and really thank you um, for the energy and dedication that you are bringing and that you brought yesterday. I really do feel, um, I mentioned, or I, I'll mention here that somebody this morning called from New England Public Media and they wanted to cover our meeting today. I don't see anybody in the audience, um, but maybe the reporter really, um, I think was just getting up to speed with our work. and. And we'll get to some questions I have about media's involvement. I really want to hear from the committee about that in the for the future. But um, what really hit me when I was briefly talking with him was, you know, that effort yesterday and getting out into the into the community in that way and listening to people and sharing what it is that we're doing with people. Um, we can sort of do all of this all day and, and put Facebook posts up and, and, and um, newsletters and whatnot, but uh, really going and connecting with people is such a powerful way for us to really draw out these voices and these stories that most of us never hear about or would never hear about. And so um, really thank you for that. And I think there are, I think there's 30, 33 senators. Um, many of them are very interested in doing this. So we are going to continue this effort with um, various groups of residents. Uh, Mary has a list of people who have shared interest in being involved. And then of course the senators, um, 33 of them, and we had three of them yesterday. And I think they want to rotate um, and, and continue this movement. So thank you, Mary. And thanks for joining us. Um, just quickly to say kind of on a more data way, we covered all of Rolling Green, all of Village Park. Um, Rolling Green, I think there were 10 units left, but somebody's going back for them. Um, we covered all of Village Park and we color, covered all of Riverside. Um, so that was first effort. And then um, in our next one, we have a, a, a running list here. So um, we can talk about that. But all right, Mary, thank you so much. Any questions for Mary before she goes? Their comments or observations, Dr. Shabazz? Just a word of thanks and, um, and to observe that the... Um, you know, there's so much of the process here is about truth telling and having that opportunity to live, to live in, in, in one's truth and speak that truth um, without, you know, without fear of, of, um, of contradiction or retaliation. And so I'm so blessed that there was an opportunity for that kind of, um, uh, for that kind of truth telling to take place. Thank you yes. so much. Yes, thank you, thank you. And and I just I just want to quick add that um, you know we kind of we pulled this together at, at the last minute in terms of the Amherst residents and these are you know people that have been I've been involved with in several of the um, book groups that Reparations for Amherst has uh, has led people that I've met and I I, uh, I know have been interested and so um, they've been. Uh, asking over really the last you know year and a half what can we do how can we help how can we help so um it was it was exciting there's a lot of people out there who, who want to contribute so this was a, a really we were all excited <laughs> we were all excited to have to meet each other in person and to be contributing and feeling like we were helping so people are out there i, I do want you to, to know there's a list being compiled so <laughs> I'm just a regular Amherst residents who really want to help. Absolutely. Um, Dr. Rhodes, did you have a comment? 
comment? Yeah, I, from I really appreciate uh, Mary and, and the others who, who did this. Uh, one of the things that I learned when I was running for office the last time for school committee, I knocked on over 500 doors. Wow. Uh, throughout uh, uh, Amherst. And uh, the, there's nothing like an upfront and personal contact mm. with mm. people to actually talk, listen to them, to hear what they have to say. Uh, and often those voices get lost and often and 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 uh, and running for public office the interpersonal and the personal relationships that you can form when you're going door to door are absent so you don't you don't un people who have not who have run for office who have not done this don't understand the incredible diversity of our community and the, and the different voices out there that often are not heard but want to be heard and to understand the whole scope of what and who Amherst is. So that effort is really, really important, especially for the AHRA. Absolutely. All right, Mary. Well, thank you. Please feel free to stick around for the rest of the meeting. Um, but uh, and we'll, and we'll we're going to continue this conversation. Um, and so let me just get get I want to just look at the agenda here to get organized quickly. Most importantly, and Yvonne, I'm sorry, in the beginning, you missed an update on our free cash transfer um, to the stabilization fund. So I can follow up with you after just to give you um, the, ba the background on that. Um, and then um, Right now, what I'd like to do is to finalize some details about the upcoming listening session. Um, some questions have been posed, and I want to make sure that I'm answering them appropriately um, and in the way that the assembly uh, would like for those questions to be answered. So um, the first question is, well, let's just give the background. So we're going to have that listening session, which will be open to all members of the community, um, but will center African heritage and Black voices. Um, and it's going to be at the Hitchcock Center um, in person from 6.30 to 8 p.m. The Hitchcock is working on having the PVPA bus moved so that People can be dropped off right in front of the Hitchcock Center and get picked up um, for that event. And there will also be child care provided. So I haven't put those two details out in really any of the marketing yet that I've that I've that I've asked, like, for example, the town council or the town has put um, this event in their community calendar. I think I sent that link to you all. We have it on the Facebook now. Um, I wanted to hear from you to see, and these are details and maybe a little bit boring, but we've got to cover them. Um, for example, with child care. Child care, I think, is a really important aspect of giving people an opportunity to be there that might not otherwise be there. Is that something you think we should ask people to register if they think they're going to need child care? Or should we sort of hope that we have enough child care provider people, um, which are going to be mostly volunteers, of course, um, some of which work at the Hitchcock um, and others, um, or sh like, does anyone have a sense one way or another on that? I, th yeah. I think I it's, 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 it's ahead, always Ron. great. It's always great to have people tell you beforehand so that you're prepared for which kids are coming. And also there are folks who, I mean, it's great to advertise it because there's folks who would decide not to come if there's no childcare and there's folks who would, would decide to come knowing there's childcare. Um, having said that, I think that um, having having people um, register beforehand means you also know the ages of the kids, yeah. you know, so then you know, like how many people you'll need, you know, if there's infants or if there's toddlers or whatever, you know. Um, right. And, yeah. Yeah. So I think I think people should register before. I'm, I'm sure there's folks who are just who are just going to show up with their kids once they see that. But I think as much as we can, just so that we know what's what to prepare for, have people pre-register. Yeah. 
Perfect. Okay. I will do that. I'll set it up so that it's not mandatory, but it's optional. If you'd like to tell us in advance that you're coming with children and, and that's great. And I do agree that making that known is really important. Um, Hala, I saw your hand come up briefly and I also saw Dr. Shabazz. Mine was a little premature because then Yvonne said about factoring in for the people that won't RSVP. So then I took it down, but thank you, Yvonne. Okay. Uh, Dr. Shabazz, did you want to add? I didn't have mine up, but, uh, but you covered everything I was wondering about. Okay, great. Um, the other thing, the other... Uh, I, have a, I have a quick question about please. that. I mean, it may not, not be pertinent, but do we, do we have insurance for events? You know what I mean? Does the town, because we're a town committee, does the town's insurance cover us doing events in different places? I think that's a really great question and one that's worth us investigating a bit. Um, so I'll, I'll I'll talk to Pamela and Paul about that mm -hmm. um, and try to get, Paul did approve this. Um, I had to ask for permission to do an in-person event because right now council meetings, excuse me, committee meetings are happening virtually. Um, but given it's a listening session, he did approve it, but I will double check that piece of things. I think that's a great inquiry. You have um, like, um, if you have childcare going on, then you need some kind of coverage for the kids who are on site, right? There, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would think, and also um, the um, the Hitchcock itself, yeah. right? What is their take on that? So, hey, I think you know, some places when you do something at their event, they require you to to take a policy or to extend your policy to them so that it's co it covers their it covers them you know it covers their property or whatever so um you might want to find out from whoever's helping you sponsor it at the Hitchcock if they require that it's a great great I'm just thinking once you talked about kids I'm like oh my god some kid's gonna fall and something's gonna happen and some parents gonna nah. be like you know <laughs> Mm, I know. Yeah, no, I, I think that's legitimate. Yeah, really legitimate. Um, Dr. Rhodes, did you want to add to that? Yes. I mean, two experiences come to mind in relationship to having uh, a large turnout of BIPOC populations. One is um, as a school committee member and uh, going to um, uh, open houses and uh, uh, at schools uh, and, um, and, and also teacher conferences at schools uh, where they would hold them on one night. Uh, they would send buses to the, the apartment complexes and provide the transportation. And one of the most amazing things is that the attendance was off the charts mm. for those. Uh, and, and I've witnessed those. The other one was uh, the similar to that is that the uh, Rotary Club of Amherst would have their annual uh, Christmas giving ce celebration and they would provide transportation from the various apartment complexes. Mm -hmm. And that too, the attendance was always off the chart. And the, that one was, uh, the Rotary was done in connection with the uh, family outreach, uh, which provided um, uh, the uh, distribution of the information, et cetera, uh, to their groups that they were familiar with. Uh, but the attendance was always off the charts. So are you thinking that we should try to find some way to provide transportation or are you just making an observation that I think having the PVPA bus dropping off and picking up there needs to be really put out front when we're advertising this. Um, yes. And so that's a good, that's one level of what you're talking about, but it's certainly not the bigger level, which is actually providing that transportation. Um, which may take a little bit of navigating, and I'm not exactly sure. No, that, that's, um, you know, that's something that really has to be coordinated way in advance yeah, uh, yeah. with groups who have the ability to reach into that, uh, that population uh, to notify them that, the, that transportation will be provided 
if it's going to be provided at that particular uh, location. Uh, and also, you know, those particular groups have a, a, an incredible relationship uh, with the population um, that we are trying to reach that uh, would allow them to uh, communicate uh, in a way that would encourage participation. Yeah. Yeah, I will reach out. I was on the board for a few years of Family Outreach of Amherst, and I'm still in connection with those folks. So I will reach out and just, that's a great connection to make transportation or not, just to get the, if they do a newsletter, I think they're always out in the communities. Um, so I'll see just, I think that's a really great suggestion overall, or thank you. And, and, and the other thing is that uh, um, through the schools, um, there, there are opportunities to provide the uh, information to families via the, either, either the PGOs or the schools themselves uh, in terms of uh, putting that information in the backpacks of kids that they then take home. That's top of my list is to figure out who the administrators are or PGA uh, leadership folks that can get that information out. So I will be working on that today and tomorrow, um, probably more likely tomorrow at this point. But that I think is because Jennifer Moiston reminded me that we missed an opportunity to be, I, I guess we could have been tabled at the open houses that were happening at the schools. Yes. And I, I did not know that, um, but that would have been a, a great opportunity for us. Um, I don't think we were quite ready with our listening session date when those were happening, but anyway, same point. <laughs> yeah, it, it's something that uh, works. Uh, and the uh, that PGO information is, is on the ARPS website on a school by school basis. Okay, great. Maybe what I'll do is I'll I'll draft like an email with all the information and I'll send it out to all of the PGOs. And if anybody knows, um, like Pamela, if the administrators in the schools, if you've, I don't know if you've made any connections. Um, I, I have a couple connections over there. I know Hala probably has some connections. So if you do have anyone that you think if you could send to me and I'll make sure they get the information or you could send it to them either way. Okay, so the other um, two uh, questions I have are health safety. So it was somebody asked whether we were going to be requiring or recommending that people wear masks um, indoors uh, for the listening session and I haven't put anything out about that either way. And that might be something that we wait until closer to the time to see where cases are and see how people are feeling. It's going to start to get colder at that time. So, and I know the cases have been really rising again. So anyone have any thoughts on, on what sort of disclosure we should be making right now about that? Um, that, that, you know, the room there at the Hitchcock Center uh, if, if they're going to, depending on the amount of people uh, and given, uh, and also taking in, into consideration where the caseload is in terms of COVID, uh, I, 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 I would just like to err on the side of caution and say, you know, masks are recommended, but are, are, are optional. Uh, because that is not, depending on the number of people, that is not a large space. Mm -hmm. and, and so we need to look at that, and especially in terms of how we uh, set up that room. Okay, okay. And we could always provide, like I could grab a bunch of boxes of masks in advance too. And so it, we could provide masks for folks that don't have them, but would like to wear one um, that day. All right. And then the last question I had, um, other than like actually programming the event, which I think we can do at our next meeting, and I'd really love for Alexis to be part of that too, is um, I was asked this morning by the reporter at New England Public Media um, if if media would be allowed or welcomed into 
um, these spaces. And um, I didn't have a definitive answer to offer other than to say, these are public meetings. This one, and kind of along the same lines with this, is this is not, we don't have a plan to record it. We could record it. We might want to record it for internal purposes. We don't have a plan to be hybrid for this particular listening session. So um, <clears throat> I'm curious what you all think. Um, you know, one of the things that this reporter said very clearly is, you know, it's one thing for us to report on what you're doing and to get status updates, but to be able to be there and really like understand what's happening in the community from the people, the, you know, from from the voices of the people is a whole nother level of, um, you know, significant. And so I I leave that all to you. I'm curious what people think about that. Dr. Rhodes, you know, it's, you know, this is a tricky kind of question because you, 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 you want to provide a space that where people feel safe in terms of speaking. The question is, will the president presence of media dampen that enthusiasm for speaking? That is an unknown question. On the other hand, it is a public meeting. Exactly. And actually, I probably should check in. Uh, I'll check in with Athena and Paul and others just to it might not even we might not even be allowed to not have the media come in like it may not even be an option. I think they're allowed to come to council meetings and other meetings that are public. Um, and I don't think there's any particular you know, uh, criteria for listening sessions as opposed to public meetings. So um, that I have to I have to look into a little bit. But we may want to just think about when we're thinking about the programming and whether we're going to sort of break out into small groups to do some listening in small groups and then coming back. I've been now at a couple of these symposiums, um, and, and Dr. Shabazz was with me, um, where where certain aspects were being documented and recorded by media, but other aspects were not. And so, um, for example, if the media came to see that there were people and a lot of people there and they could sort of generally get a sense, but then maybe when people are being listened to, that part is not, you know, we ask the media to kindly step out for that. So maybe we just give this some thought over the next week and, um, and because and, and I'll also check in with Paul and Athena and just see what the requirements are and then we can circle back. Does that feel um, okay? Oh yeah, please, Yvonne. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I, I think that um we want to encourage people to be able to speak up. And if the press is there, some folks may feel like they can't, you know, really be as candid as they would ordinarily. But then on the flip side, I feel like there's opportunities for the press to maybe listen in general and interview people individually. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And so that it's not a part of, of this, of the whole thing. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think that um, it also depends on who's going, who the reporter is that's going. Um, <laughs> no, no, really like, yeah. who, who's, who's, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, it, is it somebody that we can actually um, rely on some discretion? You know, yeah. understanding that, you know, a, a portion of this might be um, private and not um, that they're here to, to really record everything, you know, but, but right. having someone who, who can, can, you know, publicize what we're doing and have it be real is something that we want. You know, at this stage in the game, now that we're doing listening sessions, we want that. We want people to know. Yeah, yeah. I see Dr. Shabazz's hand is up, I think, right? Yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll just say quickly that um, I think it goes toward our, our own policy and what we think the sessions are. 
are about what we hope to get out of, and I think we ought to set the tone. Um, the session is for us to hear from members of the community what they want us to know about this reparative justice plan that we're charged with, with developing. So that being the case, I think the tone to be set and, and set on the spot is that while this is a public meeting uh, and we invite people as they come up to share whatever um, identifying information they're willing to share about themselves in terms of name, in terms of being a resident of Amherst, general, general location of where in Amherst, North Amherst, South Amherst, uh, downtown, you know, uh, whatever village center that they're willing to share. And then to feel completely free that we are listening and that we are listening attentively, but if they wish um, to put a boundary that their comments be only be appreciated and be heard by us mm. in that moment and that no one records, then our tone we should set is, is that if requested that all recording devices would be paused or silenced or you know uh, stopped per the individual community members request yeah and um, and that furthermore the the perspective of the meeting is that we are under a kind of of, of, of cone of silence we are within a zone of uh, of, of, of empathy and understanding and trying to listen to achieve a certain understanding such that we ask that what is heard here be heard here and felt here and reserved for one's own processing being here. And that if you do wish to make an accounting of this, whether you're writing for the Amherst Indy or the Gazette or whatever, ask the person's permission to, to you know, speak to them after the meeting ends to see if they're willing to go on the, on the record or, or be, be, record, um, be mentioned by name uh, if they wish to have, you know, uh, ha have that identifying information attached to their comments. But I, in other words, I see this as modified, as kind of a modified public hearing or public meeting to the extent that we are willing to um, reserve a certain amount of privacy to the moment per the request of the speaker. If they don't request it, then fine. But if they do, then let it be something that we can all hear in, in the spirit in which they're they're willing to uh, to offer their comments. That's how I certainly would, would see it. You know, sometimes they go like this when people have good words in a meeting. <laughs> I mean, it's always good words, but <laughs> thank you, uh, Dr. Rhodes. It would, it would it would it would be really uh, behoove us to when at the beginning of this listening session uh, that that be made very clear. Uh, and that uh, usually reporters don't want to uh, put someone else's name or attribute comments to them unless that person agrees to that. Uh, but you know, if, if we can say to any reporters who are there uh, that we would like for them to gain the permission of a speaker or, or a person who's talking to be quoted, in their particular um, newspaper or media outlet. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I think that um, I have a list of the media that I that ha has ever made contact about this. Um, we can have a, a full disclosure like that. Sorry, Dr. Shabazz, go ahead. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, yeah. So that that sounds really good. Um, and one other 
matter that I wanted to ask you all about, and again, we can discuss it now or you can think about it. Um, so as a town counselor um, and knowing that our recommendations are going to be presented to the town council in June and need to be approved by the town council, I've certainly let the council know that we're hosting this session. They've seen the, the flyer, they know about it. Um, but there have been circumstances in the past where, um, and in particular, in my experience, it's been through Zoom because we haven't had these in-person meetings um, since I've been doing this, but where maybe it was felt that having people in those positions of power in the room or in the space, um, and again, these are public meetings, we can't turn anybody away quite frankly, you know what I mean? Um, so however, we can set the tone as Dr. Shabazz said. And so I'm curious, um, In on one hand, it feels like having counselors there to really be able to hear from their own ears what's going on and to be there would be very, very powerful. And on the other hand, um, I think almost it feels like we need another way, like a, a person on this committee, um, and maybe it's a rotating person of African heritage, not myself, that would be willing to do the listening um, for somebody that isn't wanting to talk publicly about these things. You know what I mean? Um, so, but that ties into just if there are any strong feelings about counselors being there um, and how much I should encourage participation or not. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm curious what folks think about that. And, you know, like I said, it doesn't have to be now, but just, and that was another thing on my mind. Um, all right. So let's see here. Um, the registration portal, we're continuing to get the word out, uh, the boots on the ground effort, the card that went out, which had the listening session information was the original card with the portal. Um, if anybody needs cards, please let me know and I will distribute them. I'll bring them to you. Um, and and I will try to find ways for to get into these PGO and, and into the schools as well. Um, Amherst Media has graciously offered to put the information and the card up on their programming. They actually have an intern that is covering us, like is just dedicated to covering us, Jim tells me. Um, and Jim has asked if anybody on the committee would be willing to come and um, what did he say here? Uh, how did he, he called it something that I had, maybe it's like a lingo that I, that I wasn't, he said, um, he asked, why not set up a time for some voiceover or talking heads about this important survey? And so I'm not sure exactly what that means, but I think he's asking if somebody in the committee would come and do a voiceover something that's going on programming wise. So um, I be I can give anybody Jim's information if anybody wants to organize or coordinate around that. Um, I think he was really happy to help us with that. Um, Look, and, the place is right next ahead, to, the, yeah, to the post office on University Drive. Uh, I think anytime anybody has five or 10 minutes you know, certainly if you can give them a heads up beforehand, that's fine, but probably even without a heads up, if you uh, can can go there and uh, yeah, and record record your, your, you know, I think all six, all six, seven of us ought to, uh, ought to do this. And, um, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've offered to buy y'all lunch, buy y'all dinner. It doesn't seem like anybody wants to get together or we have, we have, we're, we're able to get together. So, you know, if, if we can all do our individual, um, you know, one minute, you know, 30 second spot, that will be so valuable just as a record, you know, even of, of us and, uh, and, and, and a record shared through Amherst Media. That would be very good. I'll try to get by this week myself. Thank you, Dr. Shabazz. And if you do, um, and you're, you know, and, and if it's somehow you can share it with the group, or just to give some, us a sense of what what would be, 
what would work well, that would be great. Um, I'm going to share my screen one more time and show you all where we're at with our Engage Amherst page here. We made some changes to it. Um, and we really, Dr. Shabazz, I think, was right on to really up front and center put our um, postcard here. Given that, you know, originally we had that picture, which still doesn't include all of us. And I'm thinking the listening session, if not, oh, actually, Yvonne, you can't be at the listening session, can you? Okay. Well, we'll figure something out, but for now we, I'm, we, I'm really sad about it too, but I'm, I'm going to be traveling. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, if you want, um, and you're available at any portion of the night, you can FaceTime with me and I can set that up and just have you set up on FaceTime. <laughs> um, so we have this up front and center. Um, and then we have information now about our listening session. We also have a community calendar, um, you know, spot in the community calendar on the town of Amherst's website, which a lot of people do check out. Um, so that's there. And then um, more information about the listening session here. And then some other news features um, and I would love if Dr. Shabazz would just take a couple minutes to talk about this um, wonderful talk that I was very sad to miss um, before we finish up with this meeting. That would be great. Is there anything else that, that, so I, I didn't, I don't know if you saw this, Yvonne, because you weren't here, but I also set up um, a Facebook page for us so that we can begin, we created an event for this session. Um, we can begin to sort of document, put things up here. Um, this was, uh, oh, I love this here with Dr. Shabazz went up to the Peace Pagoda yesterday. That's another connection we're hoping to make or that has already been made by Dr. Shabazz, but we wanna deepen. Um, and then this was the group that went boots on the ground. So anybody that's on Facebook that would like to be an administrator of this, just shoot me a text or an email. I'll add you and, um, and that way we can all be contributing. Um, and just, just keeping in mind that it's centered around our work at the AHRA, but of course there's always um, things that are part, part of that that aren't direct. Um, all right, so I'm going to stop that. Um, and then one other thing on the engagement line that I wanted to mention is um, me and Ms. Bridges and Anika have very, very early just planted some seeds um, and, and Dr. Shabazz as well about um, given and, and Ms. Bridges, I, I'm going to just ask you to talk about this, but the the Ancestral Bridges um, exhibit that's up at the History Museum is going to be there through November, remind me, 7th, 5th? 5th. 5th, <laughs> yeah, I knew it was close. Um, and really that exhibit, if you haven't been there, is it's basically the heart of everything that we're doing in some sense. And so getting people there to see the early history, um, to see the early Black history. And Ms. Bridges, I'd rather you talk about it for a second, but just to say that we want to try to maybe have some efforts to get folks over there to see the exhibit before it's going to be in a different location or not in that location anymore. Mm -hmm. I, I think um when you sent the email about doing that, I, um, it would be great if we got together beforehand sure. and to see how that needs to be done through ancestral bridges. Absolutely. So that would be great if, if we could get together. You got it. And, yeah. And put, and put something together the way it should be put together. So yeah. it'd be great for people to come and see that, but, um, I just want to make sure that that's going on the right path to be to make sure that Ancestral Bridges is involved in putting this together. Oh, absolutely. Not only involved, no. but leading. And we're only there in a, if it's supportive for, for the AHRA to be at all involved in absolutely. that. Absolutely. But I, that would be great if we could get together yeah, when you we'll have time. <laughs> 
exactly. when you have time. Yeah, yeah. Before no. November 5th. That's why I'm brain. Very yeah, shortly, exactly. Hopefully, hopefully within the next few days, maybe we can get something together. Great. Yeah, absolutely. And and um, I'd like for us to, yeah, if we can do it in the next couple of days and then maybe at the next meeting, we'll have something that we can talk about. That would be great. Cause I was hoping we could maybe have gotten together yesterday, but I I know. Know things were kind of like, <laughs> yep. Sideways, <laughs> sideways, <laughs> crisscross, all that. Yeah. So if we can get together, um, yeah. yeah, within the next couple of days, that would be great. Perfect. Okay. We'll do it. Okay. Definitely. Great. All right. Great. Um, okay. Now are there any, so that's basically all that, let me just, I'm just double checking here. Um, I don't have any topics that were not anticipated. Dr. Shabazz, if you would just add a few words about the event on Friday, um, of last week that you participated in, if you feel, if you feel like it, if you don't, that's fine too. I just, I, it seems like a really powerful experience. Well, absolutely. Um, the five injury areas associated with reparations, one of them includes criminal punishment. And, um, the, this book, um, stolen wealth, hidden power, the case for reparations for mass incarceration by Tassily McKay makes this point. The sweeping criminalization of blackness that was integral to Nixon's war on drugs and the decades of racially targeted crime policies that have ensued shapes the lives of all black Americans, whether they have personally dealt with the criminal legal system or not. Combined, these community and population level dynamics contribute to wide national disparities in health and access to economic resources. The chasm between Black and white Americans' physical and material well being is most starkly evident with regard to infant mortality, a tragedy twice as likely to befall Black children as white. Among infants born from 1980 to 2004, mass incarceration elevated the death rate by a magnitude that uh, public entities would generally be, <clears throat> by a magnitude that public entities would generally be willing to expend $239 billion to prevent. Most of this figure represents avoidable deaths among black infants. Mass incarceration also diminished population level life expectancy for, Afri for Americans born from 1981 to 2004 by a degree that, the, that government actors generally value at $1.76 trillion. That figure includes 727 billion associated with lost life expectancy among black Americans. Um, this is work that is very germane to our own town of Amherst, uh, to the lives of Black people in our town of Amherst, and is, um, cannot be, uh, um, you know, overstated the importance of this area of criminal punishment as an aspect of what the case for reparations is all about right here in Amherst. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Shabazz. And I see Yvonne's hands up. Yeah, I um, looked up that book and put it in my like list to buy. But uh, while I was doing that, I was like, you know, maybe it's worth it for us to have a resource list that we can make available to people, maybe through the Facebook or wherever, where there's, you know, book of the week or something, because mm -hmm. this is fascinating reading. I mean, I think a lot of this information are things that people aren't aware of. And I wasn't aware of this book, but um, I mean, I'll read the book, but it would be great to have a reading list. And mm -hmm. maybe it's something that um, committee members also can get a chance to read articles or read books. I know there have been some other resources that have been um, circulated before, but maybe we need to have them all in one place, like yeah. one like list that we can send people to, or we can refer to ourselves. 
I love that idea. And in fact, Pamela, um, Pamela, you had sent along some information that you um, suggested may be good for our engage pay, our engage Amherst page. Um, I actually attended the first of those two Boston Foundation workshops, um, but not I didn't see the second, which focused on local initiatives, I think more. Um, so what I would like to do is at our next meeting, if we could focus some time on putting together that resource list, including books, videos, and other resources that we want to have made available and where we want them. Do we want them on AHRA Engage? Do we want them on Facebook, on both? How do we want to organize that? So I can then work with Brianna and Pamela to get everything up. Um, so think about that for next time. Um, and we'll pull up, Pamela sent some things. I think Dr. Shabazz sent some, there's a, there's some things circulating. So yeah. great idea. It'd be great yeah. to have it all in one place and, you know, begin to even educate our own people. I mean, you were doing this listening session. It'd be great to just say, if you want to have more information yourself, you can go to this resource and watch this video or read these articles or books. Cause I think lots of people, there's so many, um, um, you know, misconceptions about this process, you know? And so it's great as much information and knowledge as we can have people get. I think that's part of the reason where we have this committee. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm going to pause and just call for public comment. Um, and there are two people in the audience. If anybody would like to make public comment, please use the raise hand function and I will or Pamela will actually <laughs> bring you into the room. Um, yes. Uh, so I see Mara is great. Wow, Pamela fast. <laughs> All right. Hi, Mara. Hi. Um, I just wanted to remind people that the um, Community Land Trust is having its fall meeting, which is going to be a combination of a get together with refreshments, a brief meeting, and also a walk around Mill River. We've reserved the pavilion from two to four on the 15th with the rain date of the 16th. And everyone is welcome. And we'd love to get to meet people in person. Awesome. Mara, do you have anything that we could put on the Facebook page? Like do you have any Im imagery yeah. or anything? Yeah, I'll, I'll email it to you. Okay, that would be great. And do you know if you've, have you received any applications um, for the open um, uh, grant that you had available? I don't think there are any completed applications, but there okay. have been a number of inquiries. So that's been great too. Good, okay, good. We'll keep getting that out too. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. All right. So are there any other comments or questions? Um, anything else that you'd like to see um, other than sort of the standard items that we're working through here on our next agenda? Um, if there's anything that you would like us to cover, just email me, text me, and I'll make sure that it gets put on the agenda. Um, the once a week meeting, especially with just sort of some of what's, there's a lot going on <laughs> right now. And so I'm curious if folks, like we we skipped a week this past time and that felt okay to me. Um, we could meet again on the 10th or we could meet again on the 17th, but continue our efforts in between now and then. I'm fine with either one, but curious what folks think. Anybody have a preference? Deborah, were you, Ms. Bridges, were you going to say something? You saw my face. I did. I'm, I'm fine with the 17th as long as we can, um, if we make a, 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 a point of getting it out for the exhibit, if that goes out, before the 17th and I'm fine with that we're okay. going to meet before that anyway and if we can put that together that would be great okay so that's really so up I'm to good. 
You're good with that. Okay. I mean, that's up to the assembly. If the assembly is good with that, then we're good. We can kind of meet in between just to, to, to work on getting that out. Um, I'd also be fine with doing a meeting on the 10th and just touching in and making sure that we're, you know, it doesn't have to be a long meeting. And if, you know, so we could do that or let's put it this way. Is everyone available? Oh, we can't meet on the 10th. It's indigenous people's day and it's not. It's a, a holiday, right? The holiday. Yes. Yeah, yeah, sorry. It's a holiday. <laughs> I, I will say that I'm traveling for two and a half weeks and I won't be around after the, like the 17th. Are you, can you come to a meeting on the 17th, Yvonne? I'm looking to make sure. I'm not sure I can. I think I can do the 17th. Okay. Let's just yes, go. With that. I can do the 17th, but I, I, I'll be gone the 24th and the 31st. Okay. So let's, we'll do the 17th we'll do and the then we 17th. can sort of reevaluate because that in fact, you know, th then it will give us time for one more meeting before the listening session. Um, and yeah, great. All right. Any other comments or questions before we adjourn? Good All right. Well, thank you. Great meeting as yeah. always. <laughs> <laughs> Just one of my favorite times of the week. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Good to see everybody. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.